Hi guys, this is Mr. V and this is uh, Apes Review video topic 1.11 or point 11, food chains and food webs. This is the last video of unit one for the Apes topics. So um, hopefully this will be one that kind of wraps it up and puts it all together for you. So one of the things we mentioned in the previous videos about trophic levels was that energy ends up flowing from one level to the next. And as you get higher and higher on the trophic pyramid, um, less and less energy is available. Well, one of the ways we model this is through a food chain, okay? A food chain is something we've seen, I'm sure you've seen it many, many times in previous classes, but it's how the energy gets from one small organism and it passes through to the next. So um, one of the key things to remember about a food chain, this is an ocean food chain or aquatic food chain, is to remember that the arrows point to the direction where the energy is going, okay? So basically it goes from the uh, prey to the predator. Okay. So in here, the shrimp is getting eaten by this fish and then the next fish and so on and so forth, which means that the energy that this shrimp was providing goes to the next level and so on and so on and so on. So it's important to understand that. And that's something that's actually been asked several times on previous APES exam questions and actually has also been something that uh, previous uh, students have had to write. So you can lose points on questions if you do not point the arrows in the right direction. If you pointed these arrows in the wrong direction and you went the opposite way and you said, okay, well, the arrow flows this way, you're basically saying that this fish is eating the uh, osprey and that's not true. You need to have the arrows in the right direction or you may lose points on that. So that's something to, to keep track of. It's an easy, easy mistake that can be made and um, you'll lose points on that. Okay. Now, you are probably familiar with how this gets more complicated. You know, my, my students joke with me all the time, well, a food chain is just a more complicated food web. And that's, uh, a food web is a more complicated food chain. And that's actually pretty accurate, right? A food web is basically when you put together multiple food chains, right? So now, if you look at the middle portion of this picture here, each direction of arrow flow is one food chain, okay? But you have multiple food chains here and that's what makes up a food web, okay? And so as you can see, these are the trophic levels, your primary producers, your primary consumers, secondary consumers, tertiary consumers. And then you can see how the autotrophs go to the herbivores and then the carnivores, the primary carnivores and the secondary carnivores. So this shows the nutrient movement all the way through. So this is a very simple trophic level, but it can get much more complex. So as you see here, this is a marine food web. And as you can see, there are things where the energy flow does go to them, right? So let's just look at the bowhead whale right here. So the bowhead whale is right down here. As you can see, this has the mistolabilia, okay, which is going to provide energy. That's going to be what the whale eats. But the whale itself can also be eaten by the killer whale, and it can also be eaten by humans as well. So we do play a part in these food um, chains and food webs. And then up here we would be we would call we call the apex predators right the human itself um, the polar bear and then seabirds themselves are pretty high up in the food chains as well but they all eat different things you can see that this descri describes whether they're omnivores or herbivores or carnivores um, and the whole way it works right there eventually right a lot of these nutrients end up coming back through detritus which is the dead organisms and stuff um, and um, so it gets more complicated. So you can see there's multiple, multiple food chains, right? A good exercise here would be to look through this and go, uh, how many food chains can you find, right? Um, I won't torture you with that, but that's something that you definitely have to consider and look at. And this can lead to different cascades and show, well, you know, what happens if we eliminate this one right here? And then what happens to everything else, right? So that's something we're gonna talk about shortly. Okay. Um, this is something called the feedback loop. So some species may contribute more to the ecosystem, right? So uh, we'll talk more about that in the next unit with keystone species. But this ends up causing what we call positive or negative feedback loops. So positive or negative does not mean good or bad, okay? So we're not talking about good or bad loops. We're just talking about what the outcomes of these loops are. So a positive feedback loop is something that causes more of that original outcome to continue happening. So we talk about climate change this way. Think of climate change, right? It gets hot, which is going to cause uh, more ice melting, 
Okay. And with the ice melting, there's going to be less reflective sunlight, um, or less sunlight being reflected back out into space, which means the planet's going to get hot again, and that's going to make the thing continuously happen. Right? That's a positive feedback loop. It actually, you know, I tell my students, generally positive feedback loops tend to be kind of bad, right? especially in environmental science. Um, a negative feedback loop is something that um, would return to normal. Right? So think of it like this. So this is predator-prey interactions, right? As you can see, the hair, it's a little small here, but the hair is the blue line, the lynx or the red line. So whenever you see a rise in the um, uh, hair population, well, what happens shortly after? Well, the lynx population goes up too, right? So you see this one, the blue line went up first, then the red line went. And so, but what you notice is when the red line goes up, the blue line drops again, okay? It goes down. That's what we would call a negative feedback loop. That it's causing something to occur, so more predators will show up, but that is then causing them to eat more prey, so it ends up returning back to the normal or close to it, right? So if you look at it right here, they end up kind of staying pretty low the entire time, minus its peaks, and the peaks stay at a certain level, minus a few up and down levels here. So that's kind of how this ends up interlocking quite a bit. And again, you can think about how this connects to the nutrient cycles. You can think about how this connects to predator-prey interactions, mutualism, commensalism, parasitism. So it's kind of like the all-encompassing thing. So this is one good last topic to connect all of Unit 1. So here's some resources on predator-prey interactions, feedback loops, uh, the marine food webs and trophic levels and food chains. So, um, And don't let your teachers fool you. Wikipedia is a good source. So, um, I wouldn't cite it on a research paper, but definitely one I can cite in my PowerPoint. So hopefully that was helpful, and uh, we'll see you in the next videos.